request by Tanzanian Vice President Philip Mbango, who argued that over 100 million people in Africa speak Swahili, making it one of the most widely spoken languages of the African continent. Now, welcome to this episode of African Think Tank. It is your host, Yao Bantu. The African Union has finally approved Kiswahili as an official language of the African Union. Uh, the approval follows a request by the Tanzanian Vice President Philip Mpango, who argues that over 100 million people in Sub Saharan Africa speak Swahili. But actually, the number is over 200 million people, according to the United Nations. Now, Kiswahili is spoken in over 14 Sub Saharan African countries, including Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, South Sudan, Somalia, Mozambique. Malawi, Zambia, the Comoros, and as far as Oman and Yemen in the Middle East. Uh, although some of these countries, it's more of a dialect. As countries like Malawi, Zambia, they speak part of the Bantu language. You can pick up words uh, from there. Now, Kiswahili is gaining momentum globally, such that the 7th of July was designated Kiswahili Language Day by the UNESCO. So significantly, this is the first time an official African language uh, was given such a recognition. So several other African countries have introduced Kiswahili in their curriculum, in their schools. So countries like South Africa have done that. The African Union has five official languages, which include English, French, Espanol or Spanish, Arabic, and Portuguese. Now these are mostly the language of the colonizers. Now Kiswahili becomes the first indigenous African language that can be used at the African Union as a means of communication. So it's very surprising that we've never had that. Um, the, part of the reason why we do not have a, we never had a single indigenous language at the African Union is because Africa is a heterogeneous society with many different cultures and languages. Uh, we are divided in 55 countries. Um, this is historical. As you are aware, the Scramble for Africa, which uh, was officially decided between 1884 and 1885 at the infamous Berlin Conference. Uh, there were events prior to and after the conference by colonial powers, which led to the split of Africa with disregard to the cultural context and language patterns that already existed at the time, uh, so leading to the separation of a harmonious cultural group and bringing together communities that would never get along. This forced diversity has been a source of terrible suffering uh, in Africa with wars and tribalism, and uh, tri tribalism still deep-rooted today. So language is one step of bridging these deep-seated divisions and problems. I know we should we always celebrate our diversity, but it it is also obvious that our diversity has also been our undoing. It is not the Africans' fault really, but it is because of the colonial masters actually divided Africa into 50 countries just in Germany, sitting sitting there and just dividing Africa. We, we know that, but we actually need to move on from that. And one step of moving forward is introducing a language uh, into this heterogeneous society uh, or continent to actually try to bring um, us together as a people. You know, if you cross borders, if you go to Tanzania, if you go to Malawi, if you go to Nigeria, if you go uh, as far as Morocco, we should be able to communicate in this language. I think it can be done and it's, it has to be done. Uh, we cannot have these other languages and not have an African indigenous language at the African Union. It is about time. So it's a step in the, in the, in the right uh, direction. And hopefully the African Union, which is notoriously slow to do anything, can actually um, propel this move forward. Kwame Nkrumah and other leaders such as uh, Malimu Jules Nyelele, Malimu actually means teacher, uh, Kenneth Kaunda, the Sankaras, Lumumbas, the Agris, um, this is what they envision Africa. They want that the Pan-Africanism is about one Africa. If we cannot understand each other, 
we don't have a chance for one Africa. You know, it's different if you go to the United States of America, it's more of a homogeneous society where everyone is the same language. They understand each other's culture. Africa is different. It is different and we have to accept that. But we have to bridge these gaps.